Right, so facial redness, whether it's persistent facial redness, that's there all the time, usually around the cheeks, the nose, the forehead, and the chin, or a tendency to flush and blush a lot. This is a problem experienced by a lot of people, including myself, um, and it can be very irritating and very annoying to have. Now, why this happens and how to control it are both kind of a complicated area. So that's what I'm gonna talk about now. Um, flushing or blushing, we're gonna to refer to them as the same kind of thing. Um, basically, it's a condition where you get episodic attacks of redness of the skin um, with a sensation of warmth or burning of the skin, and it can affect the face, the neck, and sometimes the kind of upper trunk, and it occurs more commonly in fair-skinned people. Um, the more a person flushes, the more likely they are to develop kind of persistent redness of the skin, um, along with visible dilated blood vessels, which are called telangiectasia. So why certain people have this, we don't really know. It's probably multifactorial, so multifactorial, so there's a number of things happening at once. You get dilation or widening of blood vessels, which is one part of it, but there's also kind of nerves, inflammation, hormones, which can all be associated with external triggers, um, spicy foods, certain medicines, menopause, rosacea, emotions, all these things can make you flush or blush, as well as alcohol. So the only approved treatments for facial redness are topical bromonidine, which is known as Mervezo, the brand name, and oxymetazoline, or zoline, which is also a cream, but we don't use that in the UK, we use bromonidine. And they kind of block the nerves, which trigger uh, the blood vessels in the skin to dilate, and therefore they cause them to constrict or narrow, and they reduce blood flow to the skin, or to the top layer of the skin. Now, they don't work for everyone, um, but they, they do work quite well, actually. Um, but they aren't a cure. And one thing that can happen and people experience is something called rebound redness. So the next day after you've used the cream, it works for about 12 hours, you find that you're perhaps more red than you were. So they're not... Gr great for everyday use because they don't treat the underlying cause. But um, if you have an event or something, it can be helpful to kind of dampen down the redness, um, you know, so you don't flush or blush quite as much. So if you have uh, dilated or widened uh, capillaries in your skin in the upper dermis, those you, you see them as, as blood vessels, they're called telangiectasia. Um, and that can be one source of persistent redness. Now, uh, they're a real nuisance for people. I have them as well. I have a patch of them on either cheek and around my nose, and that's most commonly where people have them. Um, I've tried lots of things to treat them, and there are lots of things you can do. Um, thermocoagulation, like hand cautery. Um, you can use IPL, which is something I'm using at the moment. Um, different kinds of lasers, pulse dye, KTP, and DIAG. So all of these treatments can, in theory, coagulate and close the vessel and get rid of it for you. Um, but almost certainly will require um, repeated treatments and maintenance treatments over time. The biggest risk factor for telangiectasia is smoking. So if you smoke, you should definitely stop smoking if you're getting um, little vessels appearing on your face. Um, increasing age, sun exposure, male sex, and being of the a fair skin, and also working outdoors, um, these things can all aggravate or cause these, um, these vessels to appear. Um, of course, smoking is the biggest thing and it does cause uh, degradation or breakdown of elastin in the skin um, and causes thinning of the dermis, which makes the vessels more apparent. So if you smoke, obviously stop. Now, that's different though from flushing and blushing as a problem. So what are the treatment options if you find that you suddenly get quite red in the face um, and it comes along with a burning or heat sensation? Now, this happens to me randomly, um, whether it's a you know, I'm fatigued. Sometimes it happens when I'm tired. It can be related to um, me getting stressed. So if I'm in a stressful situation or I'm nervous about something, it will get worse um, or it can happen for no reason at all. So it's, I, I totally understand um, what you're going through. If you have this problem, um, it can be quite embarrassing as well to suddenly become very red in the cheeks, especially, and it can feel quite uncomfortable. Um, but in order to understand this a little bit, we have to talk about nerves. So blood vessels can get narrower to slow blood flow to the skin, um, and they can get wider to allow more blood flow. And these parameters are controlled by nerves. So um, the nerves can cause the blood vessels to constrict or dilate, depending on the situation. Now, increased blood flow to the skin increases the amount of water evaporation and heat loss through the skin. So in a fight or flight response, 
if you're getting stressed or hot, um, you will dilate the vessels in your skin to get rid of heat, to allow you to sweat, um, to kind of get your whole system going. And that can be in response to an adrenaline thing. Um, and that's your nerves releasing adrenaline at the nerve endings and causing the vessels to dilate. Um, now you have different receptors for adrenaline on your blood vessels. And um, there are different types depending on where you are. So there's beta one receptors, which are mainly in your heart. Beta two receptors are in the lungs, the GI tract, the blood vessels, and in the skin cells. And there's also alpha one receptors in the smooth muscle of the blood vessels in the skin. So there's three different kinds of adrenaline receptors primarily. So there's two ways to block those receptors. One of them is by injecting Botox into the skin. Now this is kind of an interesting idea. Um, rather than injecting Botox or botulinum toxin A into muscle to stop the muscle from working, um, you are injecting it into the skin to stop the blood vessels from dilating. Now, this has been published in case series, um, looking at the effectiveness of injecting small amounts of Botox into lots of areas where you flush or blush, um, and the amount of units required is anywhere from 20 to 75, um, and it seems to work quite well to, re to reduce the dilatation of the vessels and to reduce blood flow. Now, I haven't tried this myself and I haven't tried it on any patients, um, but it's something that I'm thinking of doing, so you may see me doing that in the near future. It does sound slightly painful. The other way to block the receptor to stop the redness is to use beta blocker medicines, and those are specifically targeted at that beta receptor to then block it and stop the adrenaline from causing the vessels to open or dilate. Now, beta blockers are traditionally used to treat high blood pressure or hypertension, and they do that through the same way, though when you use them for blood pressure, you use relatively higher doses. Um, one of the bonuses of these beta blockers is that they also can reduce anxiety, and we know that anxiety or stress can make flushing reactions worse, so that can be helpful for people who suffer from flushing or blushing when they are anxious. But do these medicines work in real life? That's a good question. So I've used carvitolol, which is a type of non-selective beta blocker um, in my patients because that's the one with the most evidence behind it. Um, you take it twice a day. There's been four papers published looking at the effect of taking carvitolol for rosacea, associated flushing or, or persistent redness. Um, and it does seem to work quite well, but they're all case reports or case series. They're not randomized controlled trials. So the evidence is not fantastic, but that's all we have. Um, from clinical experience, I find that carvitolol used twice daily does seem to work quite well for a lot of patients, but not for everyone. The side effects are low blood pressure, you can be, get dizziness, you can feel a little bit weak from them, um, but those side effects are relatively rare and uncommon with the use of carvitolol because the dose is so much lower than it's used in blood pressure. The other one that's often used is called propranolol, um, but that has more known side effects. So again, the case numbers are small. So carvitolol has the most evidence behind it, though it's not a huge amount of evidence, but that's the one I've had clinical experience with. I also have started taking it myself to see whether it'll help control my flushing and redness. So I'll report back at another time about whether or not I think it has. Um, it's important to remember that beta blockers are contraindicated or not allowed in patients who, who have asthma, but it can also make psoriasis worse. So if you have asthma or psoriasis, you shouldn't be using beta blockers for any reason. Definitely talk to your doctor first or talk to your doctor in general because these are prescribed medicines. So in summary, when it comes to flushing or blushing, and persistent redness. We don't have great treatments, but the two that may work well on the nerves that cause it to happen in the first place are little intradermal Botox injections and or beta blockers. So there you go. That's my complicated answer to what sounds like a very simple question, which is how do I stop from flushing and blushing so much?